Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in the Fire Rises mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host Mr. Mokalever and truth be told today we're playing as Germany as you can tell from the title and maybe the thumbnail. Um, but uh, I'll be honest, I this is my first time I've ever touched this mod. I've been recommended to play it but I chose Germany because it seems like maybe it would be an okay nation to try out. I know America is supposed to like collapse and whatnot, maybe eventually and like fall apart. I really have no idea what's going to happen in this mod. It's based on a modern day you know, world, but there's a few things that have tweaks here and there. Things that, uh, it's a bit more, I guess, radical potentially. Um, we do have an economy system here with uh, GDP and you know debt and whatnot, so we're going to learn that in this campaign. Party popularity, um, we have that. We got some stability as Germany, we got oh, no, literally no war support. We got 20,000 people uh, as manpower. Um, small economy, got some fuel, but we're led by Frank Walter Steinmeier. But we're going to convene the Bundestag first. Um, usually I read these, but I guess not. So we have different routes we can do here. Um, aim for energy independence uh, versus eventually I mean, we can do energy autarky, which I do like. Uh, or look for alternatives. <clears throat> eventually you can do ensure domestic stability versus fuel alternative future or one Europe, one vision. Which is okay, I don't know. I don't know if I want that. I'm just playing this to see what the route's like. Or then we can do a focus on domestic issues, eventually get a green future, and go with the Green Party, or align to the right, or Europe united and strong. And then eventually you can rethink our military Germanism. Military Germanism? German militarism. Um, with Bulgar democracy versus Europe united. So, embrace the future of the warfare, for the Eurocopter, or found the European Defense Army. So. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Um, we're missing some equipment production, but let's go on. Actually, you know, I want to read about this guy. So, he, this guy, our head minister, president, is a German politician and diplomat who has served as the president of Germany since March 19, 2017. Previously, he was a minister of foreign affairs and vice chancellor, giving him extensive experience in international politics and domestic governance. Steinmeier represents the Social Democratic Party of Germany, or the SPD, and is known for his moderate stances of commitment to dialogue. Under his leadership, Germany faces a number of challenges, including issues of migration, climate change, and economic stability. Steinmeier actively supports European integration and strengthening transatlantic ties, emphasizing the importance of cooperation with other countries in addressing global problems. He also advocates for social justice and inclusivity, reflecting the desire for harmony within society. Steinmeier uses this platform to address citizens, highlighting the importance of unity and solidarity in society. His presidency is characterized by an emphasis on democratic values and the necessity of maintaining an open society. Overall, Frank Walter Steinmeier places a key role in shaping Germany's domestic and foreign policy, striving to maintain a balance between tradition and the necessary reforms in a changing world. He's a member of the North of NATO. Uh, no governments that are collaborating with us. And we have occupied territories of Bavaria. Of course, the Bavarians would think they're occupied. Um, but whatever. All right, we're liberal conservatives. Oh, we're part of the CDU. Uh, <clears throat> And we're constitutionalists. It's an ideology that proposes the foundation of the country is not negotiable. Proponents despise social and economic change and take away from the picture the country is founded on. Some call them stagnant, but under them, businesses know where the place is and what the rights are, making the economy trust the government. Okay, so what do we got? The Deutsche Wehrmachtness. Over the past hundred years, the German legacy has been one of shame, oppression, genocide, and dictatorships. From the Kaisers, uh, spilling the blood of thousands in the fields of Western Europe to the brutal Nazi rampage bleeding Europe dry to the East German government whose sophisticated police state define what authoritarianism meant for decades. Germany must never get its trouble pass. The nation is in avowed hatred for hypermilitarization, causing a shortage of men to fill the army. To make sure that Germany can never ruin Europe again, extremist ideologies such as communism and Nazism are unpopular in Germany and are actively suppressed by the government to make sure the mistakes of the 20th century are never repeated again. Phase, nuclear phase out project. With the energy crisis deepening, Germany's decision to phase out nuclear power comes under increasing scrutiny. Initially, it seems a bold move towards renewable energy and environmental sustainability. The project now faces serious challenges. Rising electricity costs, growing alliance on imported energy, and the slow rollout of renewable alternatives have all sparked public debate. Critics argue that shutting down nuclear plants has left Germany vulnerable, while environmental advocates remain steadfast, insisting that the long-term benefits of a nuclear-free future outweigh the short-term setbacks. The government's position is increasingly precarious. While there is still strong public support for green policies, Concerns over energy security and economic strain are mounting. Pressure from business sector and foreign allies is complicating the issue further, as some call for a temporary halt to the shutdowns to stabilize the grid. Germany now faces a critical decision. Proceed with a nuclear phase-out and risk energy shortages, or delay the project to ensure the nation's stability in the uncertain times. We must remove these death traps. Here, insufficient resources, no divisions in training. 
So for this mod, it's been updated. It's apparently the combat's similar to Millennium Dawn, which doesn't help me at all because I've never played Millennium Dawn that much and never liked it that much, truth be told. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see what we can do here. I'm not sure what the best template is, but if you have a template that works for you in uh, the Fire Rises, please let me know in the comments below. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of going along with whatever we've got. I don't mind making maybe a few Panzer divisions, maybe, perhaps. Panzer Grenadier divisions as well. Motorized. Self-propelled. I like self-propelled. Infantry apparently is not very good. So, yeah. Infantry fighting vehicles. Mechanized, motorized, and all that such. Fighting vehicles versus APCs. I'm not sure which one's better. Soft attack, 16.6. Hmm. I really have no idea which one's better overall. We're going to make some tank divisions for now. And... Hmm. We'll go with that. Hopefully we... Don't need too much money. Inflation's 1.7, huh? Money changed almost 8 billion per month, huh? It's not bad. From taxes, expenses, modifiers, real GDP, and this. What a mind paying down our debt. No manpower, basically. What do we got here? Merkel Reich. Angela Merkel has been a bastion of stability in German politics for the last 15 years. Under Merkel, Germany saw itself guide into an air prosperity with its role as one of the key heads of the European Union, all securing peace both domestically and with the Russians. However, with Merkel's reign coming to an end with her announcing that she would not seek a re-election in 2021, the future of Germany is increasingly uncertain. With conflict still high by the refugee crisis, economic troubles looming over the horizon, and an ever more unstable United States, how long will German stability really last? So we'll convene the Reichstag, focus on domestic issues, hope trust goes up, Actually, where is the modifier that gives this trust? Member of NATO. Oh. Statistics screen. Oh, it's a lot of men. Divided into all sorts of different things. Oh, okay. Also, uh, you don't see some things here and there. Um, it's because things I get copyright struck. And sometimes I can't have things played. Unfortunately, I would like to, but like the groups, it's probably... Uh, not good for us. Just I apologize. Just because uh, I would like you know to get monetized sometime. So so I apologize for all this. I'm taking this extremely slow because I have no idea. So oh, America leads, followed by Albania. Okay, interesting. So that's NATO. Where do we see... Um, oh wow, there's so much down here. Government, Angela Merkel, old figurehead. Heiko Maas. Peter Altmaier. Horst Seehofer. Bruno Karl. And Eberhard Zorn. Oh, it's over here. Oh, just currently 200%. Oh, well, that's not good. <clears throat> We're here. Day of the political party. That's not good. Well, we should probably get them to like us a little bit more. Trust us a little more. Get more CDU popularity. Anti extremism. For a while. Consumer advocacy. A unity government. What is this? High public trust versus a low public trust. Overwhelming low trust. Well, I don't really have any idea which way we should go, so let's go with uh, more trust. Focus on domestic issues. Focus on contributing to NATO. Modify the government. Ah, so economy laws, mass consumerism, civilian economy, huh? Ah. Free trade, got some high taxes, oh yeah.
Mirrors zero interest rates, of course. Inflation goes up, though, which you don't like. Welfare state, pe state pensions. Limited workers' rights, military laws. Oh, entice the masses. Oh, that's what we can do. Okay. Many reporters. An opera can be recruited. Punishments. General exemptions. No draft exemptions. Liberal security. No security. Moderate security. Equal rights. Female empowerment. Matriarchy. Traditional roles. Proportionate representation. Overrepresentation. Minority laws. Ah. Minority expulsion, that's funny. Social laws, immigration laws. Critical thinkers, what do we got here? Huh. Military staff. All weather specialist day. Eh? And organization, all stuff like that, okay. Well, that's interesting. What's going to do with their stuff here? So the European Union, it stands as one of the strongest international institutions in the world. With a combined strength of most of the continent of Europe, it facilitates a free flow of information workers and goods throughout Europe. Federalization, 7%. Effects of federalization. Your skepticism. Current Visegrad separatism. Reinforce the EU. Hmm. Push for federalization. German political sphere. Germany is one of the most democratic nations on earth, and with the progress of elections, we are able to properly reflect the will of the people in Safe Cape, Safe Cape, Safe Keep our democratic values. The federal public's political landscape is one that's not seen change in quite some time, but like any ocean, it takes only a storm to cause change. But every man of course, and we can withstand anything that is thrown at us. With the Bundestag, we're able to peacefully discuss the issues within and the across our nation and communicate with both friend and foe. Let's hope it remains peaceful. Do you link up popularity support? Very aversive. AFD. What if you just went crazy and lobby for the, this party? Or the Volkswirtschaft. Germany is always the dominant economic power of Europe. Our nations take pride in, in ingenuity and hard work of our people. However, as of recent, we stand at the crossroads caused by energy issues as well as general recession across the world and the five are jeopardized trade relations. Our dear Chancellor, it's up to you and your wise decisions to bring the economy back to the position it was in 10 years ago and make Germany the feared and respected world power. Based on nuclear power. Different. COVID virus, COVID-19. The World Health Organization, collaboration with the Communist Party of China, has been closely monitoring the alarming outbreak of a novel virus in the city of Wuhan. The sudden emergence of the virus has raised significant concerns among health experts and global leaders alike, particularly with the return of thousands of Chinese citizens from vacation, which could potentially facilitate the virus's spread to foreign populations. As the situation has escalated, experts have noted that the virus appears becoming deadlier, exhibiting an increasing mortality rate as alarmed public health officials will arrive. Reports indicate that the virus is not only highly transmissible, but also shows signs of mutations that may enhance its virulence. This concerning trend has led to intensified scrutiny and research efforts aimed at understanding the virus's behavior and its potential impact on global health. Yesterday, the fears that may have harbored were confirmed when the uh, World Health Organization officially declared that a pandemic is no longer a matter of if, but when. This declaration marks a critical turning point in the global response to the outbreak, uh, prompting nations around the world to take urgent action to mitigate the impending crisis. Countries are already counting the number of infected citizens with healthcare systems rising for influx of patients as cases continue to rise. So there's not much we can do. I don't know which way I want to go. Defend the minds of the youth. More popularity. Academic development. First COVID-19 case. First case of coronavirus has been identified in Germany, according to health regional officials in Bavaria. 
The health ministry in the southern German state said late Monday that a man from the Starnberg area near Munich had been infected by the virus, but is in good condition. In a press conference on Tuesday morning, Bavarian health officials said that the 33-year-old man had been infected by a Chinese colleague from Shanghai when they both attended a company workshop in Bavaria last week. The Chinese woman had been visited by her parents who live in the Wuhan region prior to her trip to Germany. Experts currently consider the risk to the Bavarian population to be low, according to the ministry's statement. Countries worldwide have been on high alert for the virus, which first broke out in the city, Ch Chinese city of Wuhan. Let's hope it doesn't spread. Oh boy. So, revitalize the autobahns. Everell modernization, that sounds cool. The green alternative. Secure EU interests. Competitive spirit. Revive the German coal industry. Fighting the pandemic. Force mask mandates. Fight back against the narrative. Oh, crap. Crackdown on protests. Support Quail Duncan 711. Reopen the country. We can maybe go Europe United, maybe. I don't know. Can we actually, like, integrate all of Europe together? Hmm. Federalization. Or fighting the pandemic. Which we'll probably do that one next. Fight back against the narrative. <laughs> Microchips. Those who do not love me do not deserve to live. And the Albanians of a war that surprises many of the recent worldwide turmoils that are the status quo getting broken in Libya. And the war torn country has finally come to peace. The new authorities announced the creation of a national congress to elect a new government. The people of Libya finally got a breath of fresh air as dozens of politicians are forming the platforms, propagandizing their programs and announcing their ambition in every part of the country. For the first time in almost a decade, Libya is illuminated not only by the merciless desert sun, but also by rays of hope. Will they ever recover? Probably not. Um, trade and economy. Population is 1.9. So when do we get money? What if I said, uh, auto payment? Tago's debt auto payment? So if I got rid of this, prevents liquidity from being used to cover money. American Taliban peace deal after 18 long months of U.S. Special Representative Almay Kalazad and the head of the military Islamic group Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar signed the historic agreement Saturday in Dola, Qatar, where the two sides spent months hashing out its details. Under the agreed upon terms, the U.S. is committed to withdrawing all its military forces and supporting civilian personnel as well as of its allies within seven months. The drawdown process will begin the U.S. reducing its troops to 5,000 in the first 100 days and pulling its forces from five bases, with the rest of the forces leaving in the following months. The Afghan government will also release up to 5,000 Taliban prisoners as a gesture of goodwill in exchange for 1,000 Afghan security forces held by the Taliban. The Taliban agreed to end support for the groups such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS. However, many doubted that the Taliban could hold their end of the deal due to the historic ties between the groups. More than 2,400 Americans have died in Afghanistan during nearly 18 years of fighting, as an estimated cost of the U.S. Treasury of nearly a trillion dollars. In recent years, despite the surge in troop levels, the Taliban fought U.S. and Afghan forces to what analysts have called a state of strategic stalemate. The Afghan government will also begin negotiations with the Taliban to map out a political future or a political settlement, which would establish the role the Taliban would play in the future of Afghanistan. These negotiations are expected to start next month. One of the first tasks in these intra Afghan talks will be to achieve a lasting ceasefire in Afghanistan. Good for them. Or just go with straight up AFD. We can also do that too. Oil, oil price to skyrocket. Oh. The Dow Jones Industrial Average suffered its worst single day point drop ever, smashing through records set earlier this month as instability in the Saudi government rattled investors who have already been panicked over the coronavirus epidemic. The blue chip index near, near bear territory amid mounting fears of the global recession, plunging a record uh, to over 2,000 points, or se almost 8%. And Nasdaq dropped 3 7%, and the SP 500 lost 7.5%. After diving 7%, 7 in the opening minutes of the trading session, triggering a New York Stock Exchange circuit breaker that halted trading for 15 minutes, 
Monday marked the first time the trading curve took effect since the current thresholds were implemented in 2013 to avoid a repeat of the 1987's Black Monday crash. The price of oil shot up to $117 USD per barrel as disruptions across Saudi Arabia halted production. As the Saudi oil fields churned to a halt and the other countries struggled to keep up production amid shutdowns and worker shortages, it seems that a recessionary period is all of a sudden. Oh dear. Russians raise oil prices. It seems that the Russians wasting their time to use the oil prices to screw us over. Moscow's informants they are raising prices for the oil and gas at the center of Europe, setting broken supply chains and lack of supply due to instability in the Middle East, effectively extra money from us due to our lack of alternative suppliers. First of all, they gloat about saying to the invisible hand of the market forces us to rethink a strategy. Now we really need to find a solution to the crisis. Our country will fall in an economic block hole otherwise. Absolute scumbags. What do we got here? Public trust, huh? State pensions. I do kind of want to do this one though. Get more weekly stability, which is not bad. Oh, well, one below fifty percent. But let's try the coronavirus first. Maybe we'll go with AFD. We'll see. Oh. I've not completed. Expand nature contribution. Oh, so these these ones are locked. FTP. Reinforce mask mandates. I just don't know. Align to the right. Maybe we just go for that one. Germany first. Defenders of democracy. Fight back against a narrative. Uh, Crackdown or protests. Versus this one. Support Kvyat thinking 7 11. I have no idea what that is. But that looks like fun to me. What is Visegrad separatism? Extreme Bundeswehr shortcomings all of all the European armies. The Bundeswehr is perhaps one of the most pathetic. Underfunded, underequipped, undermanned, and undertrained, the Bundeswehr as an encouraging state is woefully unprepared for any future conflict. In part, the German anti militarist attitude is responsible and would take a large crisis to convince the rest of Europe that German militarization is necessary. Anti Russian protests. In recent weeks, Germany has witnessed a significant increase in anti Russian protests across major cities such as Berlin, Munich, and Hamburg. These demonstrations are primarily, primarily driven by public discontent over Russia's decision to raise oil prices, which place additional strain on the German economy. The rise in oil prices has led to increased energy costs for businesses and consumers in Germany, exacerbating the ongoing economic challenges associated with the COVID 19 pandemic. The German public has expressed frustration over the government's perceived inability to counteract Russia's influence on the energy market. The anti Russian protests have attracted a diverse range of participants, including environmentalists, economic experts, and political activists. These groups have united under a shared goal of voicing the concerns regarding Russia's actions, urging the German government to adopt alternative energy sources and reduce the nation's dependency on Russian oil. In light of the ongoing protests, it's recommended that the German government consider the following actions. Engage in diplomatic efforts with Russia to address concerns of the increased oil prices and explore potential avenues for negotiation. Develop and implement a comprehensive strategy to diversify Germany's uh, energy sources, focusing on renewable energy and increasing investment in sustainable technologies. Initiate public awareness campaigns and inform citizens about the government's efforts to address the energy crisis and mitigate the impact of rising, raising, or rising oil prices on the economy. Disarm nation, huh? High taxes. Still getting for oil. You get more money, though. I do like more money. Description equality. Mm. Not 
sure if I want any of these. Prison laws? Sure, why not? Low COVID-19 cases, not good. Bundestag. Oi. Unity government under 33% popularity, public trust goes down. Debate in Bundestag. In recent days, there's been a lot of debate and controversy in our parliament about some policies and statements by, made by elected officials. This kind of tension is not welcome in such a respected institution like the Bundestag, and we need to address it immediately. We can either blame certain members for causing this chaos or try to find a peaceful solution to order. From the right, blame the left. We must fight for unity. I'll blame the left for this one. I'm gonna fight back against. Screw. It. We're gonna go AFD route. I guess why not? Let's see what we, how much we can screw up everything here. We do need to expand our NATO contribution. Gaddafi secures power in Libya. Surprising news coming from uh, Libya. Saif al Islam Gaddafi, the son of Mu Mu uh, Muammar Gaddafi, has managed to consolidate popular support and win the post civil war national elections with an overwhelming majority. He successfully utilized the Libyan people to satisfaction with the agenda of other candidates and appealed to the restoration of national pride and sovereignty before anything else. Now that Gaddafi is back, Gaddafi's back in power, Libya should kick out foreign mercenaries that have been infested in Libyan lands since the beginning of the civil war. As a revanche spirit strengthened by the hour in Libya, Gaddafi has renounced plans to create a united socialist Arab state in the Maghreb. The great Jihad begins. Oh, there's Donald Trump's here. State of the Union, side with Trump. Oh, they went with side with Trump. Operation Warp Speed is available. Plan for the worst. Stimulate the economy. God, this is all an A struggle, so that's cool. Let's see what happens. What's Russia doing? We have no idea, of course. What's Japan doing? It's economic burdens. German conservatism, huh? Whoa. Prepare for the Olympics. Follow the Olympics. Delay the Olympics. Huh. Japan, Japan on the world stage. That's kind of cool. And what's China up to? Can we tell? No. Well then. Well, that's interesting. Um, how is trade? So, what do we got here? Liquidity is not is nice. So we can take a loan. Or we can pay off our debt. Because right now, we're making money. Right. Effects on our current debt. Yeah. Monthly change. We lose money, we lose debt. Helps us with slightly more stability. Is this worth doing? No idea. Probably not. Oh! Gets out of some fire. Oh, yeah, they are. Lockdown protests. Amid the COVID 19 pandemic, Germany has experienced the wave of lockdown protests as citizens express their frustrations with the government's stringent measures to control the spread of the virus. Thousands of people have taken to the streets in major cities, such as Berlin, Munich, and Frankfurt, demanding an end of the lockdown restrictions and voicing concerns about the impact on civil liberties. The protesters, consisting of a diverse mix of political affiliations and social backgrounds, have united under the common goal of challenging the government's approach to the pandemic. Critics argue that the restrictions have been overly harsh and disproportionately affect small businesses and low-income families, leading to further economic hardship and social inequality. In response to the demonstrations, German authorities have urged citizens to adhere to the lockdown measures, emphasizing the importance of public health and safety during the crisis. Officials have said the success of the restrictions in curbing the spread of the virus and preventing hospitals from becoming overwhelmed. While the protests underscore the growing discontent among the German population, they also highlight the delicate balance between the governments around the world must strike between preserving public health and protecting individual freedoms. As the pandemic continues to evolve, it remains to be seen how authorities will adapt their policies in response to the changing situation in public sentiment. Go on the back inside. People speak. Who needed stability? Give us in people here. Sharia democracy, oligarchy.
I don't know if I want to know if I want to get involved in any of that type of stuff. Oh, we got the Bundestag, of course, Volkswirtschaft, and what else? European Union member. Radio detection, and we have our unique focus tree here too, or research tree, infantry. Everything green is done. Aim for energy independence. Well, I guess we'll just run. Oh, let's we'll just run it first. We have a medium amount of trust. It's on the low public trust side. That's currently getting lower and lower, though. Anti extremism, consumer advocacy. So it sounds like it looks like it's pretty easy to play as a CDU. Because that's how we start and whatnot, but Saudi King dead. Ripples have spread through the global community with the announcement of the armed hostilities of the Kingdom of, Host of Saudi Arabia following the death of King Salman. As a Solomon al Saud, one of the most oppressive regimes on the planet, the regime has always been fraught with corruption, instability, and religious conflict between the Shia minority and the Sunni majority. Those fractures came to light today as the Royal Arabian Coalition, an opposition government to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, launched an armed insurrection against the central Saudi government. The Arabian Republic, a liberal movement, concentrated in the north of the country, revolted as well, throwing the country into full anarchy. Oil prices sparked over 250%, throwing the global economy into chaos as the stock market plummeted to historic lows. The world holds breath as a peninsula is lit aflame. Send our consultancies, condolences to the Saudis. Look at that. Yes. And now we'll do this one too. Nationwide protests in the U.S. following the tragic death of Quentin Evans, an African American man who died in police custody. Protests have erupted across the nation. Circumstances surrounding his death are still unclear, but video footage shows an officer kneeling on his neck as he struggles to breathe. The protests have drawn comparisons to historic events like the LA riots, with hundreds of thousands taking to the streets to demand justice. Reports of escalation in the city of Minneapolis were looting of businesses big and small occurred in areas where the police department has lost control of the sheer weight of the numbers involving in the, involved in the protests. Political activists have cried what seems to be another run of the mill police brutality incident to what they have seen to be a far larger crisis that requires drastic social action to be resolved. Hardline Edge shares have even equated the current situation to that of a drawn current Jim Crow. Conservative elements have called for the drastic de-escalation, stating that in regards to the incident involving Mr. Evans, that Mr. Evans' legally de detailed, detailed legal history displays the precedent for violence against officers, that being what the suspect officer used to justify the use of brute force. Conservatives have already begun to arm themselves in inner cities and protested in a number in, in under a pretext of protecting small businesses, which they have stated is being targeted by the protesters. Clashes are inevitable. Fire rises. Do we want to say the real thing? The real person? I guess not. Okay. Go to Bundestag support, huh? Anti Russian bulwark. Putin's. Putin der Steyr. Hmm. Oh, I forgot about the complete too. Ah, oh, that will even is just give them combined for now, it's fine. We're building stuff up, uh, research, trade. Inflation keeps going higher and higher and higher. Oh, it's because of stability too. But it's helping out our stability as well. 
Can we do that one? Reopen the country? Crush coronavirus. <laughs> low COVID-19 cases with extremely low COVID-19 cases. Reopen economy. I don't know if we're supposed to do this. Ufnin? I don't think we're supposed to do this yet. I mean, truth be told, I mean, if no one gets, you know, screened for it, it doesn't happen, right? Massive eruption in Beirut. The port of Beirut is exploded in hellfire today after a warehouse packed with ammon ammonium nitrate. It's only ignited exploded. So it's in detonation that eviscerated the entirety of Beirut port in the southern city blocks. Resulting in over 218 deaths, uh, thousands of injuries, and hundreds of thousands as well as homeless as the damage extended to much of Beirut's infrastructure as well. The Lebanese government has went on to declare a two-week state of emergency in response to the disasters immediately as protests have broken out over the government's fail apparent failure to prevent such a disaster from taking place in the first place. Oh, the humanity. Well, we'll see about humanity and whatnot. Massive crackdowns in Belarus. As well as Matthew to protest in Riyadh today. <clears throat> oh, today, the streets of Riyadh have erupted in chaos as citizens take the streets in mass protest following the return of exile activist Yalya Asiri, Asiri and the collapse of the Saudi Arabian economy. The return of Asiri, a prominent critic of Saudi government known for his advocacy of human rights, political reform, and criticism of what he describes as a royal dictatorship has spurned thousands of citizens to march against Mohammed bin Salman's government. The collapse of the pro-petrodollar has also influenced these protests, sending shockwaves through the Saudi economy, causing inflation to skyrocket in the Riyadh to promote. Officially, Mohammed bin Salman has not issued any statements on the riots, although Saudi law enforcement has been ordered to launch a heavy-handed crackdown on the protests with significant authority and force, leading to the deaths of four. Further reports of arrests, detentions, and violent clashes between protesters, security forces have emerged. There's only an added political tension with Assyri delivering a speech to the protesters, calling on them to take action for economic justice, political reform, and end to government corruption. It's currently unclear how Bin Salman will officially respond, and this comes only after months he was coordinated as king following the death of his father already. Human rights and humanitarian, humanitarian organizations have announced crackdowns, with Yeya Assyri being invited to speak on the topic by Radio Free Asia. And Belarus. Belarusian President Alexander Lushenko has come under intense scrutiny for his recent wave of harsh measures aimed at suppressing liberal protesters and politicians of the country. Utilizing the notorious state security agency, the KGB, Lushenko's actions have triggered widespread condemnation for the international community, raising concerns about human rights violations and democratic backsliding in Belarus. Since the disputed presidential election in August of 2020, which saw Lushenko claim victory for a sixth consecutive term amid allegations of widespread fraud, Belarus has witnessed an unprecedented wave of protests demanding political change and fair elections. In response, Lushenko's regime has resorted to increasingly repressive tactics, employing the KGB to quell dissent and maintain his group in power. Quite troubling. And prince a rebellion in Saudi Arabia. Ripples have spread to the global community with the announcement of armed hostilities in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia following the death of King Salman al Saud. One of the most oppressive regimes on the planet, the regime has been fraud with corruption. I've already read this before. Um, uh, the Royal Arab Arabian Coalition. An opposition government to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman launched an armed insurrection against the central Saudi government. The Arabian Republic, a liberal movement, country in the north of the country, revolted as well, throwing the country into full anarchy. Oil prices spiked over 250%, throwing the global economy into chaos, as the stock market plummeted to historic lows. The world held its breath as the financiers lit a flame. The end of the House of Saud? Oh, look at this. Saudi Arabian Civil War. Go forth to war, whether it be easy or difficult, and strive hard in God's cause uh, with your possessions and your lives. This is for your own good if, if you but knew it. The monarchy shatters. Huh. National liberalism. Has. Can I say that word? Has. I'm, I'm already demonetized. It doesn't even matter. Who cares? Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And Royal Arabian Coalition. Questionable support. Nice. Um, what do we got here for artillery? Pfizer vaccine begins trials. The first phase of the Pfizer vaccine trials began in multiple locations across Germany. The company selected a diverse group of participants, including individuals of different ages, ethnicities, and health statuses, to ensure the vaccine safety and efficacy for everyone. 
Uh, the trials involved a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled design where some participants received the vaccine while others received a placebo. The participants were closely monitored for any adverse reactions and regular check-ins with researchers to ensure the trial successes. The entry of Pfizer vaccines into, the market, into trials marked a significant turning point in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic and remains a historic moment that people will look back on with gratitude and admiration for the scientists and researchers who made it possible. Pray that it works. Armor. Amphibious tanks. I don't think I would really need too many amphibious tanks, but I could be wrong. Trains, freight trains. Armor freight trains. Reese infantry. Uh huh. If not removed in the 99 days, unlock decision to deploy vaccines against affected states. What is this? At 28 days. Quite drinking organized protests. Uh, okay. Oh, crap, it hits Germany. Oh, crap. It was only a matter of time for the consequences of the Saudi Arabian civil war would show the soul at our door. The German economy came to a halt today as oil prices skyrocket. Our companies have no choice but to halt their activities. While some analysts say the damage could have been worse, the oil crisis hit before the global pandemic, it's certain that our nation will have a lot on their plate in the coming months. With instability spreading across the world, we're short on uh, stable oil suppliers that are friendly with us. The sad fact is that our economy cannot produce enough oil for our industries. Those impact us long term. If we do not find a solution, it might make us non competitive against foreign industries. At least the Russians are still pumping their oil and gas relatively cheap, right? That's not good. When military coup in Mali on Tuesday, Mali plunged into political turmoil as military forces toppled President Ibrahim Bokar Kaita in a coup that followed months of escalating protests and public discontent. The meeting soldiers identified themselves as the National Committee for the Salvation of the People, led by Colonel Asimi Goti, detained Kiti and his uh, senior officials, accusing the government of corruption, economic incompetence, and inability to quell the rising Islamic insurgency. The coup began with soldiers taking control of the Kati military base near the capital before swiftly seizing Kiki government buildings in Bamako. Shortly after being detained, Kete appeared on national television announcing his resignation and the dissolution of parliament saying, I want no blood to be spilled to keep me in power. International actions were swift, with organizations such as ECOWAS, the African Union, and the United Nations condemning the coup and calling for the immediate return of civilian rule. The military takeover has raised concerns about Mali's already fragile stability, as well as the entire West African region. Africa being Africa. Inflation just keeps getting higher and higher. Shinzo Abe resigns. Rest in peace. Uh, Abe has announced to his ruling bloc his decision to resign. Shinzo Abe's ulcerative colitis, a chronic inflammation of the mucus, mucus brain of the colon. Condition causes resignation in 2007, but he has been since been stabilized in 2012 as elected prime minister again on the 24th of August. He served more than almost 2,800 days in office, the longest term of any Japanese prime minister. He has recently been made aware of a worsening illness, with the prime minister visiting the clinic twice in recent days. I cannot be the head of the government if I cannot make the best decisions for my people. I have decided to step down, Abe said at the press conference. An era has ended. We have replaced extremely low COVID-19 cases with low COVID-19 cases. Extreme left action. Tackle political extremism and power populist parties. 40% chance far left, far right gang violence, far left groups stage protests. I'll crush coronavirus. That sounds like it'd be important to do. Well, we just reopened the country, even though uh, it's probably not a good idea, but whatever. I don't know, we'll see. Oh. Oh, so it's supposed to get worse right now. Okay. Anti-Russian bulwark. Uh-huh. Balkan diplomacy. Deal with Visegrad. Or Visegrad. Realization. Probably not. We kind of went down the route we already are going. 
Defenders of Democracy, probably not. Germany first, probably is the way we're going to go. Support Vote Europa. Full federalization. I'll, I'll try that some, some other time. Caucasian diplomacy. Russo German trade deal. Hmm. Partial rearmament. And we also need to aim for energy independence, too. Saudi refugees. The devastating war in Saudi Arabia has caused millions of civilians to be displaced and millions more fleeing for safety. A large batch of refugees has just arrived and seeking asylum. Many of the right were quick to denounce the arrival, bringing up memories of the migrant attacks during the Syrian civil war and that Germany has no place for them. Take as many as we can. Hmm. We can only afford to take so many in. Not a huge difference. And I guess revisit refugee policy. Empower populist parties. Tackle political extremism. Empower populists. Sure. Oh, there goes a GDP. I'll go with that. Skirmishes in Nagorno Karabakh. The day a series of high intensity clash not seen since 2016 began in Nagorno Karabakh following Azerbaijani military offensive along the line of contact established in 1991, seeing the capture of Fuzuli and several border towns. This offensive saw the use of armor formations as well as drone supply to Azerbaijan by Turkish and Israeli armed dealers. Already, Armenia spent or sent an appeal to the United Nations and Collective Security Treaty Organization, though the pleas were not heard by Moscow, leaving them to fend for themselves. Stepan the capital of the Republic of Artsakha, Artska, Artsakha, Sak, an unrecognizable separatist state established in 1988 during the first Nagorno-Karabakh War, has been the target of Azeri shelling and drone attacks. Syrian mercenaries have also moved to aid Azerbaijan, mostly being of the pro-Turkish Hazma division originating in the northeast. Well left uncovered by most media of the Western world, another conflict between these two countries is brewing since the end of the first Nagorno-Karabakh War. War that ended in an Armenian victory and the establishment of the Republic of Artsakh by the Armenian diaspora in the region. It's likely that the Azerbaijan is going to emerge victorious due to the refitting and reformation of its armed forces with Israeli and Turkish weapon systems, such as uh, Bayraktar, UKAV, and military advisors. Pray for a peaceful resolution. So. Help us out with this. And we'll crush it. That'd be good. Far right protests against refugees. The far right agitators have staged multiple protests across the country in the protests of recent wave of Saudi Arabian refugees. Thankfully, these have remained as peaceful demonstrations with few outbursts quickly snuffed out by police officers. But their continued protests put pressure not only on the refugees, but on the Bundestag to take a stance on the refugee policy. Wer schaffen das? Oh. Islamic attacks in France and Austria. Terrible news arriving out of Western Europe today as Islamic terrorists uh, attacks, uh, or Islamic terrorists, strike major cities in France and Austria. In the last 25 hours, the Metropolitan Police of Paris, Marseille, Lyon, and Vienna have reported multiple bombings of prominent downtown locations. French and Austrian law enforcement have reported that the casualties go into the hundreds, marking yesterday's attacks as one of the deadliest in European or Europe's modern history. Current large-scale investigations and the perpetrators have uncovered that they are recent Arab immigrants who have either been radicalized by terror groups operating in the Middle East or have directly recruited for their operation by such organizations. Various Islamist terrorist groups currently fighting in the ongoing civil war in Saudi Arabia declare responsibility, citing Western involvement in the Middle East as a large motivator. 
NATO intelligence is warning the public of many Western European nations that the threat of terrorism is still extremely high and that people should immediately be on the lookout and report anything suspicious. France and Austria have announced a day of mourning for those lost in the terror attacks and they, they would bring the groups responsible to justice. Send our condolences to the French and Austrians. Jihadist uprising in Mecca. Islamic world looks on horrors reports from Saudi Arabia revealed that jihadist extremists have attacked and seized the city of Mecca. Already, the Arabian Peninsula has been thrown into a state of unprecedented turmoil as a result of the civil war, but it appears that this new development puts the icing on this tragic and tumultuous Aka conflict. As Saudi government forces collapse in their efforts to keep order in the country, Islamist terrorists have exploited this opportunity and seized the city of Mecca with only minor resistance from police and remnants of security forces still in the area. The terrorists have publicly declared that the city will be the host of a new caliphate along with calling upon others connected to terror cells across Saudi Arabia to strike and seize other major cities. Major Islamic faith groups internationally have condemned the seizure of the city, with many criticisms scathing their insurgents as disgracing one of the holiest places in Islamic faith. Remnant forces of the Saudi government and armed forces have promised that they would be swiftly dealing with extremist group, any extremist groups that dare to continue a legal armed struggle against the government. Muslim citizens across the world are in a state of shock regarding the brazen attack in such an important place. For now, it seems that this war in the heart of the Islamic world will only escalate. Oh, look at that. As to Mohammed. Yeah, many government collapses. That's pretty normal. Confirmation derived from the Supreme Council that their forces have taken the city of Aden and accepted the capitulation of the pro Hadi government in recent years, with the fighters have inflicted mass casualties on Saudi units with recent estimates claiming three entire brigades being lost in the mountains of Yemen. Coupled with Saudi airstrikes seeing decline, the pro Hadi government was pressured by constant Houthi attacks, and Aden fell within a few weeks of the renewed offensives. Will Yemen finally ever see peace? No. Oh. Home, warf home front warfare. Empowered consumers. Revitalize industry. Oh, that'd be good to do. When selected, there's this. Shim left wing action. I don't see hooligans. Thermal optics, H and K, Heckler and Cock. Thank you very much. We make no money. We are barely building anything. We have no war support, which is normal. And we have 20% stability. Change in policy. What is this? Modify officer corps, naval command, military command. Oh. Well. Whatever. Change of policy. The collapse of the Saudi government has triggered a flood of refugees into Germany, overwhelming the nation's infrastructure. Already struggling with integration challenges, German now faces unprecedented surge in asylum seekers, stretching the public services to their absolute limits. Tensions rise as far right political groups seize on the crisis, arguing that the country can no longer afford to support more refugees. At the same time, humanitarian voices within the government and civil society urge that Germany must continue to uphold its international obligations despite the strain. The public is deeply divided on the issue, with protests mounting on both sides. Some communities are starting to see violent clashes, as frustrations grow over housing shortages and job competition. International allies are watching closely, knowing that Germany's decision will set a precedent for the rest of Europe. The government must now make a critical choice, turn away the refugees to preserve domestic stability or continue accepting them, even at the risk of social unrest. We will do our best. Saudi refugee influx. Remove that gain influx, which doesn't help anything. Empower populist parties to tackle political extremism. I'll go with that one next. Okay, so we got rid of Corona. Corona no longer is affecting anybody. It's November. Yay. Third Congo War. Who cares? Following months of economic turmoil after the oil crisis, the Democratic Republic of the Congo has once again collapsed into Arab warlordism. While well, a failed attempt of the opposition group, alliance of the Democratic Forces of Congo to take power, they have once again taken up arms in the northeastern region of the nation, vowing to restore order by any means necessary. Meanwhile, separatist groups backed by Rwanda in the east have intensified their efforts for energy for independence in the south. The long tumultuous Katanga region has also seceded, vying for the cargo future free from the central authority in Kinshasa. The DRC, already the sixth poorest nation on the world, faces unprecedented humanitarian catastrophe. With millions in the interior to develop, dependent on the foreign aid and the export economy for the livelihoods, they're last hanging the balance. Subsistence, 
Subsistence farmers too face shortages as fighting is expected to destroy large swaths of arable land. God save the Congo, because even the Congo can't save itself. Alright, terrorism on the rise. Okay, whatever. Next election is well, less than a year now. I kind of want to send just like uh, some volunteers and such. Oh wait, the British are people on that side. Whoopsie. I guess it's on the wrong side. Oops. <laughs> Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. Oh, yep, my bad. Happens. Defense artillery. I mean, it's barely out of time. Industry. It's fine, whatever. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Taxes. Expenses. Battalion upkeep. Social spending. Debt payments. Well, that's quite not good. Slight oil crash recovery, huh? Undermine the traffic light coalition. Boss of the BFV. Reconcile the parties. Germany first. Look for alternative partners. Energy autarky. Well, soon the Wilhelms, Wilhelmshafen, the refineries. Halt Nord Stream 2, revitalize the autobahns, revive the German coal industry, North Sea oil exploration, oil reserve supply, invest in synthetic oils, Sponge Cities program, reverse the nuclear phase out, increase renewable subsidies, EV subsidies, liquidity, rethink free trade. Ensure domestic stability. What do you like? You work or negotiate with OPEC, placate the Russians, lift Venezuelan sanctions, Azerbaijani gambit, back the Arabian Republic, secure EU interests? Probably not. Free the markets. Negotiate with the Iranians when you're upon vision. The green alternative. Hmm. Well, it seems like we're probably going to be down this way anyway. Energy autarky. Germany is famous for a major global export of cars and machine tools. It's also now export of electricity to several different countries. This harvest caused quite a strain on ourselves become, because of what that. We have no choice but a severe limit if not completely cut off our energy exports. Our ports might not be happy, we would rather have that than our systems live in the cold dark. And eventually we want to do what? Defend the minds of the youth? Yeah, might as well. Why would end it there? I mean, we're seeing the, the very beginnings of the rises of fire mod for Hearts of Iron 4. Um, American oil in the oil, that looks cool. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm sure things, more fun things are going to happen. And why not? So, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. And see what we can do with Germany and a couple of ourselves from the EU somewhat. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.